Hello everyone and welcome back to another episode of Wedflix. Today we're talking all things floral and flowery with our lovely friend Sarah of award-winning Yorkshire florist Leafy Couture. There's absolutely loads jam-packed into this episode and it's a great one for florists, um, startup florists, lovers of flowers and also wedding couples. So we're going to head straight over to the interview. Uh, there is some sound variance on this one, but that's because we're both uh, recording from home with a slightly dodgy internet connection, but it's not too bad and it's well worth staying tuned. So hi, Sarah. Hi, Jules. Hello, welcome to our Wedflix programme. So you are Sarah Richardson, yeah. owner of Leafy Couture. Do you want to introduce your business and yourself, please? Hello. Um, well, my name's Sarah. I have been doing this since 2006 for myself. So we have a wedding and events business. So we cover from your buttonholes to bridal bouquets to big floral explosions in marquees. Um, and we also run a flower school. So we're based in Arlington in um, West Yorkshire. So you've been going a while, Sarah. So how did you turn your passion for flowers into a career? Take us right back to the start. Where did it all begin? Um, so I first started out, um, I did a sociology degree um, in Newcastle, which I absolutely loved, but um, it wasn't for me. It wasn't getting my creative juices going. Um, and I was working in a restaurant as well. And I loved being around people and events and happy people. Um, and then somebody bought me a really beautiful bunch of um, flowers. And I just thought, oh, they're gorgeous. Like, they were, I, can't, I couldn't stop looking at them. And they were just giving me this, like, hit of happiness. And um, at that time, yeah, I was, then I was uh, temping in a bank. And I was terrible. I was so bad at, at doing this temping job. It was just not for me. And um, so I started Googling courses and thinking, what can I do? Um, and both my um, parents are art teachers. So they kind of... Um, you know, all my life I've been dragged down to art galleries and colour and texture and all these things have kind of been, you know, intrinsic to my upbringing. Um, so, yes, yeah, so I did some research and then went to college and I did a BTEC in floristry. Um, and then, so I've got that up to level three. Um, and then since then, I've just kind of um, kept studying. So I'm, I'm part of a movement called Chapel Designers, um, an American florist called Holly Chapel. So I, keep, I go out there and I study with uh, people all the time. Sounds good. So um, you mentioned your qualifications there. For someone starting out in floristry, do you think those qualifications are key? Um, I think it depends really on who you are. I think um, a lot of the college courses at the moment are kind of, you go one day a week for like two years. So um, it depends if that you can fit that around your lifestyle. Um, we set up the flower school because um, there was just a bit, quite a lot of the college courses were quite outdated. And, you know, I wanted to get my hands on all these beautiful, gorgeous, lush flowers. And we kept getting given like chrysanthemums and carnations, which kind of do have their place, but not like week after week after week. Um, so, so it depends on the kind of person that you are, really. Yeah, so it's more a case of if you are someone who loves flowers and thinks that a career in floristry, obviously we're, we're a wedding channel, so wedding floristry be for you. Um, you don't necessarily have to do that college thing. You could, you know take on an internship or, or help yeah, someone out absolutely. or get a job or and do yeah. it alongside. And do, yeah, I think um, quite a few businesses want people to have some sort of experience, um, especially when it comes to weddings. You know, there's so much skill involved in wedding flowers and uh, dealing with brides and like the wedding setup. So many things can happen um, that you need to be prepared for. Um, so it's good to like bench training, you know, have, you know, working on the bench um, when you're in a flower shop can be really good, um, a good way into it. But I think just trying to learn as much as you can. And there's so many other flower schools around now that you can, you know, you don't have to go traditional college, you can go different and dip into like different wedding courses and things. Yeah. So you were a teacher, you did teach college courses, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I did. Yeah, so I've experienced it from both sides, really. So I, yeah, I've, I've taught um, in the traditional college sense, but then um, just wanted to be in a more inspiring environment, really. Um, and I kind of left college teaching because the weddings that we were doing were getting bigger and bigger and busier and busier and um, just immersed in that world, really. So while we're on the te where we've got your teacher's hat on, why don't you tell us all about your flower school? Because I know that you do, well, it looks amazing. It looks absolutely yeah. fantastic, this flower school. And I know that you all offer both in-person teaching through the flower school, but also online teaching. 
by the flower school. Yeah. Um, so do you want to tell me a little bit about the flower school in general and then a little bit about both both methods? So um, in general, um, I would say that um, I just love flowers and I love being around flowers and I want other people to experience that and other people to get like the joy of that. Um, and we kept, I kept getting, well, people just kept messaging like saying, how have you done this bouquet or how have you done that? Or um, so other florists kept asking me about techniques and um, they were kind of excited to kind of learn and come and meet me and stuff. So, um, so that's how it kind of developed really, the kind of in-person side of it. Um, and then we do a lot of kind of courses that are for like two hours and then courses that are for like five days. So um, if you want, just wanted to come and play, we have the leafy sessions that are in our workshop. So you're immersed in like our flowery world um, and you just come show you how to make something beautiful. And then, you, you know, you spend all that time just making it and enjoying making it and then take it away. Um, and people are so proud. They're just like, look what I've made. Look what I've and made. That, that doesn't just have to be, that's not just for florists wanting to learn new skills, is it? Because you kind of care yeah. to find it. So it could be like, you know, me, no flower skills whatsoever, as we find out <laughs> at every week making session we do. <laughs> so much better because I'm quite creative yeah I think it, so much. It's, it's for it's for everybody really I think um as long as you've kind of got like passion for life you know just to come and do something it's quite mindful um you know because you're not thinking about the world you're thinking about what's in front of you and when you've got flowers in your hand that's why they're so special you know because you're just looking at them and you're smelling them and they smell amazing and um I wanted to pass that on which is why we kind of set up the flower school really yeah, it's a real escape. There's, it's it's kind of you. You've got that that time in the session, and you're you're not really thinking about anything else. You're just focused on what you're creating. I think it's really sort of um, it really chills me out anyway to to have that creative time. And it's not something that we really kind of experience in in our day to day lives unless you work in a creative industry like you do. Um, you know, it's always laptops, computers meetings and it's just really nice to have that sort of breath of fresh air so that's for your normal person who wants to play with flowers but then you do actually offer more sort of structured classes for for wedding florists don't you it's it yeah yeah so we do um we have a bouquet day well we have this this week called the wedding edit that kind of developed and um, so one of those days we make um just bouquets all day beautiful different bridal bouquets so obviously brides with different shaped dresses different bouquets will suit their dresses um so we make lots of different shapes of bouquets um and then we move on to kind of uh, table styling and we make candle like candelabras and we make hanging chandeliers and um, and then the week kind of culminates in a styled shoe and obviously one of our, our favorite was in unveiled magazine which we're so happy about um so yeah so that's that's great because it's all wedding florists coming together um, and they're all excited and new skills and um, and sometimes it's people who are just starting out in the industry and sometimes it's people who've been in the industry for like 10 years but they're a bit jaded or they're a bit bored of the same picking the same flowers or the same colors all the time so we kind of inject that color and drive back into people I think there's also a social element to that too isn't there I mean you, you hosted a really successful retreat with your colleague Elizabeth recently yeah. um and it's it, you know for florists who kind of operate on their own it's really nice to be able to come together work as a community share ideas and i know you also have sort of hashtags that you use on social media and things yeah. so you want to tell us a bit about your retreat and then your sort of social um networking yeah. so the, the retreat oh my gosh it was like last year when it was like the hottest time ever it was so fabulous um, and we just spent two days immersed in like food and flowers and we worked with um, Natalie Willingham uh, who's a fabulous makeup artist and we worked with uh, Eat Me Drink Me caterers to just kind of build this beautiful package for the people that were there. So people arrived and they got gorgeous gifts and we just, we like, we adorned ourselves in flowers. We worked with like glue to make beautiful floral jewellery that we were wearing. And, um, and then we built this beautiful tablescape that we all sat underneath and had dinner. Um, and it was at Priory Cottages in Weatherby. It was just, yeah. And, we, and then we went, like, went to bed and then woke up the next morning and did loads of flowers again. And we just sat, I mean, it was mad. We sat under the stars, drinking wine, playing with flowers. It was, it was a dream, really. Um, so, yeah, I, I wanted to build that kind of community because when we first started out in this industry, people didn't talk to each other. Like, you go to the flower market and people just wouldn't even look at each other. Um, and I, I really think there's enough work um, for everybody. So, and, yeah, and your clients more. will find you. So, so yeah, it's great. I love it. I absolutely love it. And I'm missing it. Um, I'm trying to build up more um, hashtags and things on Instagram uh, and Facebook. We've done uh, their work and be inspired. So I'll pop that hashtag 
here. I'll also pop a link to the flower school because a lot of what you do is very, very visual. Um, and I think it would help people to see images, you know, from your flower school. Um, it's all laid out beautifully online. It's a really kind of like treat of a website. So um, you can tell I stalk the flower school. <laughs> I'm like hovering over booking a course. Um, so the flower school is really, really gorgeous, beautifully laid out. Lots of examples of Sarah's work and the, the people working on the courses and also Sarah's Instagram. So I'm going to add Sarah's Instagram address, the flower school address and her uh, flowering on together hashtag here on screen. Thank you. And at the end of the video, so you can check all those out because uh, it's very well for us to describe, but it's good to see these things. And Sarah's Instagram is a riot of floral colour and... Uh, and petals it's gorgeous um, thank you so online stuff through the um flower school as well what about yeah in? so the online thing uh, kind of uh, evolved because people um I mean, we have people come from we've had people come from ireland we've had people come from like cardiff come from cornwall it's crazy to come to the flower school in yorkshire which is like the best feeling ever um at, but then people wanted access more and more. So that's how the um, online side developed. So um, from making kind of buttonholes or vases or up to like flower clouds, floral hedge pieces, it's all there. Um, and then people pay 18 pounds a month subscription and then they get kind of uh, one or two lessons a month. I think it's about two lessons a month um, and loads of fact sheets and things. Um, so yeah, it's great. And we've got a lovely little community going on there. Um, so yeah we just keep you know if people say oh, i'm struggling knowing how to make this or whatever then i just film something and then it goes out yeah my favorite bit is definitely the outtakes very much enjoy those <laughs> you should share more of those <laughs> oh, very good it. i love those i'm sure we'll have some from this video too <laughs> um so you are based in your beautiful i was going to say new workshop it's not so new actually now in your in your workshop um yeah. Do you want to tell everyone a little bit about your workshop, about your base? So if, a, if, a, if someone's coming to your flower school at your workshop, if it's not on location, or if a bride and groom or bride and bride, groom and groom are coming to visit you, um, yeah. where do they come? Tell us all about your workshop. Yeah, we are to. based in a tiny little village called Arlington, um, which is not so far from Harewood House. Um, and the site that we're on is actually, it's a famous kind of Yorkshire landmark because it's, um, the, it's home farm on Emmerdale. So if you've ever yeah. been to you ever seen home farm um the home of i think it was the tate family in emmerdale and they still film there as well so we have to kind of hide in the background um but yeah so it's crestgeld hall and it's which is a completely private family home and then we're just kind of around the back in the grounds um, and we also grow there as well so there's beautiful walled garden that we're growing our own uh, yorkshire flowers in so we're gonna have our own cutting garden um, and then the workshop was purpose built for us. So it's, uh, it's stunning. It's gorgeous. The, we just look straight onto the paddock. So we're just in green, beautiful, like Yorkshire countryside. Um, and we've kind of dressed the workshop. It's got some like moody dark walls and then some light walls and chandeliers. And we just tried to make it a bit inspiring environment to be in. Um, also realizing that you spend quite a lot of time at work. So you may as well make it feel like home. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> We're, we're filming this during um, the lockdown period in the UK at the moment, and this is just making me want to come out so badly. Sorry to anyone that this is doing this to, but we'll, we'll all be there, you know, once we can meet with you again. Sarah's filming from home at the moment, obviously, not from the workshop. Um, well, the workshop sounds gorgeous. Um, and so you, you have your brides and grooms there for the, the consultations as well, your wedding couples. Absolutely, yes. We've got some really nice, um, we've just got some really beautiful uh, teal velvet chairs um, and this nice gold table and sit down and, and we just had a blooming coffee machine delivered just before the lockdown. So that's really annoying. Um, but yes, yeah, so excited to get back to that. And th th it's a great place for people to kind of see and start to visualise their wedding because we can bring in all like the props and the vases and candlesticks and, you know, collate all that in front of the couple so they can start to visualise their day. So when we're talking visualising, um, how would you, I know it's very different for every couple, but how would you sort of overall describe the type of, the style of the flowers that you create for your weddings? Well, I think kind of house style is like pretty abundant, pretty glamorous, abundant, um, seasonal and uh, textured. Like I love texture. Um, I would say that, I mean, we like flowers. We're not kind of, you know, we'll have a, two or three flowers in there everything is super full that we do um 
but yeah I, I do love working with color as well so if I can work with color then um, we gently help our clients to work with color and um, but having said that we've done some amazing white and green weddings as well so um, I think always textured always um, tons of flowers um, and if I can get like a peony or I can get a rose that's got loads of extra petals or a double tulip then I'll always go for that um, and scented I like working with scent a lot so that's something that makes our work stand out a bit too yeah I, I've worked with you for years now about 10 years isn't it and I uh, that. what so a friendship <laughs> oh how lovely Sarah is one of my good friends off away from the wedding industry as well as in it so um but through the wedding industry is how we met so we've become friends through our through our job you got married um, the week before me as well didn't you that's true yeah we did <laughs> um how we regret a long time to regret that eh? <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm kidding I'm kidding it. 10 year yeah, anniversary. Still with our husbands. <laughs> um, so yeah, so I would describe your style. I'd, I'd echo what you've already said. So I, I know your style really well. I'd say it's very, I, I would say color is a, is a buzzword of yours. Although I've seen, you know, work to lots of different palettes, um, seasonal and lots of heart and lots of heart behind your arrangements. I think um, they're just like bursting with energy and good, and good vibes. That's how I see your, <laughs> your arrangements. So they're, they're really beautiful. Um, but you do approach each wedding individually, don't you? So how, how do you do that? How do you make sure that every wedding couple's kind of dealt with on a bespoke basis? So I think it's, it's important to kind of get to know your couples. Um, so, I mean, sometimes it's not a couple that come. It could be like the bride and the mum or, the, you know, the groom and the mum or whoever. Um, but generally kind of building a picture. Um, so we take into consideration like the colours. And sometimes people, you know, in their lives, they, you know, they have a very kind of, like white and gray palette to their house you know they, they might only dress in blush and you can tell that by meeting people in person and then some people might come in and they're literally are like dressed in all you know wacky colors and prints and that's what makes their heart sing so it's getting to a feel of the person um, and then I'll take an inspiration that they might have brought with them the dresses um, and, and how people dress their homes you know the, the weddings have to reflect everything about them as well as well as that you know magic escapism of, of a wedding um but yeah so we kind of get all those elements together and then we kind of compile mood boards and um and, and yeah and go from there really and what's seasonal try and bring that in as well mm. so with at the minute because brides and grooms can't come to see you or wedding couples can't come to see you or mums grandmas whoever yeah. um what can what can they be doing kind of at home to prepare or are you still taking consultations via yeah. zoom or yeah, absolutely. So we're doing consultations online. Um, so people initially can send like Pinterest board in. It's always, you know, the rabbit warren of Pinterest. Um, or they can like pictures that they've seen. So they send that to us and then we'll just have a chat over um, Skype or Zoom or whatever works. Um, which is working as well. The lady this morning said she wanted to her, her mum to be on the call as well. Would that be okay? And, you know, luckily we've got the technology so we can all, you know, chat together. Um, and then we'll just go from there really. It's, it's different it's definitely different but it's totally doable yeah and, and I mean if when people are putting together those Pinterest boards what what's the best thing for you is it like working from one image or is it like as many images as possible or how do you think I think first of all to do a bit of like a brain dump of everything you like and then really maybe choose like five images that really stand out to you because otherwise I think people can just be it can get a bit too much but it's like I guess trying on wedding dresses if you're trying a mm. hundred you can't remember what the first three felt like or you know whatever so I think a brain dump first and then narrow it down and what suits the venue and what suits the marquee or you know that kind of thing yeah and so when, when a couple comes to you with their board or you know their ideas they don't have to have a pinterest board it's, it's just an easy way to sort of translate things isn't it um yeah what then influences your final designs beyond that pinterest board like what do you how can you build on that how can you kind of take that idea and make it reality i think it depends i mean um ultimately budget is is something that comes into play <laughs> with things like that um and I think it's working with the couple to kind of get the, the feel that they want for their day. That's the important thing to me. You know, if they want like an abundance of flowers and they want their marquee to be like a wonderland of blooms, then um, then brilliant. You know, it, it's kind of getting from that, that stage to that stage. So we kind of build it together, really, and look at what's important to the client. Mm, I suppose it comes with experience as well. Like, you know, we, we can do this, we can do that, or this works well in this kind of setting. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It totally depends on the venue because I think 
Um, but then sometimes it's really nice to work in a new venue where um, mm. it's all fresh eyes, you know, as well. Um, but yeah, so certain venues will certainly suit different arrangements or it's a lot easier to show a bride something that you've done before. You know, if they, if they are, like a lot of our clients haven't got that vision because they, it's the first time they've got married, you know, they haven't seen what you could have. Um, so it's good to have loads of images to show people of our past work as well. Yeah, which you certainly have got. Um, <laughs> advice then... Lots of people might have to move their weddings at the moment to a season that they were anticipating or, you know, they're just at the start of their planning process and they haven't um, had a consultation with you yet. So if you're thinking about seasonality in flowers, why don't we play a little game and um, kind of if you give me your kind of top colours, um, two, two different colour palettes per season and a couple of floral <laughs> ideas for the season, okay. just to okay. get people started, get those get the creative juices flowing so let's start off in our current season thank god it's here spring <laughs> two different ideas for spring and some flat floral and florals or foliage ideas so if it was spring now i would say like i went for a walk through the day and there was forget me nots growing on the ground so that really beautiful delicate blue with some beautiful uh, pastel peach ranunculus and tulips and like lime green so i think like muted pops of pastel kind mm. of that would be a gorgeous gorgeous thing to have right now um i also love this time of year um really like moody spring tones so like i've got some really dark i should have brought them up um parrot tulips downstairs at like a really rich um deep purple burgundy purple that with um like a really gorgeous pale blush pink like lilacs just coming into flower as well Do you know what mm. lilac is like yeah it smells gorgeous and you can get that in a blush so i think like burgundy kind of yeah blushy be lovely yeah that both is. of those sound gorgeous i like that in the suggestion sarah you didn't include your traditional kind of like paper white narcissus that sort of stuff um which is obviously that's a beautiful spring touch isn't it but i love that you're thinking outside the box here so thank you thank you let's roll on into summer we love a peony <laughs> don't we yeah um yeah absolutely like it's peonies with like um corn flowers and stocks that smell amazing sweet peas english country garden vibe i'm all over that like all of the um yeah really bright beautiful but like with pale pinks as well love that love that um and then also for summer i think um maybe just like whites and greens like white sweet peas be like white um loads of gorgeous white spray roses and yeah, I love, I love like really beautiful um, delphiniums, really striking tall white delphiniums mm. and hydrangea. That, yeah, gorgeous. Oh, floral dream for sure. Yeah, can't wait to get my hands on flowers again. <laughs> <laughs> and then a season when we both got married. So yeah. autumn is a great season um, for styling and colour and doing things a bit differently. So what would you choose for your autumn florals? Autumn, um, well, do you know what? In autumn, I think I like things like crab apples and um like little berries and um like amaranthus which is love lies bleeding that's like a really like um fluffy kind of trailing looks like it should be on the muppets kind of trailing thing um and then a uh, dahlia tons of dahlia for me oh, yeah so yeah and i think mm. co color palette wise you could just go like all like the autumn tones just gorgeous like burgundies and oranges yeah beautiful yeah, and what about a flip, a flip colour palette for autumn? Flip colour palette, I would do uh, whites and greens, but I'd have loads of grasses and browns, mm. you know, like really nice br muted browns and soft browns coming in. Um, you can get loads of nice foliage that time of year with loads of brown touches to it, um, and that can just be really, like, rich. Mm. And really quite contemporary, that. Yeah, 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 absolutely, yeah. Very nice. It's kind of bringing to mind, like, almost like beachy, beachy... Um, yeah, sort of yeah. antipodean feels but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm, making notes for the next <laughs> issue of unveiled here <laughs> um and then obviously winter and how about winter. we say a winter wedding and a christmas wedding okay so um i think winter wedding i love using um things like like uh let me think hydrangea like faded hydrangea um and i like using loads of thistles and that kind of thing loads of different textures um but then also you can start because of the way the seasons go the spring flowers start coming in so you can use things like hyacinth bulbs planted up in moss and you can use um 
I like orchids and things. So I like, I like orchids. I just add another little texture to wintry kind of florals. Um, and then Christmas, all of the foliages, all of the ivies and the spruces and the pinus, like all of that. Gorgeous. Love it. Isn't it funny how when you're talking about the seasons from a floral perspective, with each, I don't know if everyone else is getting this, with each season, you're thinking, oh yeah, this is my favourite season. Yeah, yeah, it's Christmas. Every- so, <laughs> yeah, so it's like when you're talking about spring, I was thinking, oh great, yeah, fantastic. And then summer, oh, I love summer. And imagine like the bumblebees buzzing around the sleighs and things like that. And then oh, autumn, yeah. And then Christmas, obviously, and we've just done winter, you know, we're sick to death of winter. Yeah. But here we are, the minute you start talking about a celebration, or yeah. florals and creativeness you think oh that's just can't wait <laughs> so I guess the message is to anyone who's had to rearrange their wedding from say a summer to a winter wedding you know don't be put off by that I think it's going to be Absolutely. just as special if not more special now because everyone's going to be so happy to be back together and you know feeling the love that um yeah it's definitely better than ever isn't it I've got goosebumps I know. I've got goosebumps thinking about it oh how <laughs> oh, nice yeah um so I guess I was going to ask you how do florals enhance the wedding but you know just in general but I think we've kind of touched on that already it's 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 all the sort of it's the styling but it's also things like scent isn't it absolutely I think we we always say that like um the flowers like set the tone for the day so you know if you walk into a venue and you hit like we use a lot of scented roses so if you walk into a venue and you get that woof, like that beautiful smell um, and in like autumn time we use a lot of eucalyptus so um like we've got brides who say i will always remember that smell because that's how my wedding mm. smell you know so that for me it's like sets the tone it's the, like it sets the wedding um and i just think they just make people happy you know and they give some something beautiful to look at and to focus on and that's why we have flowers for like every celebration of like birth marriages deaths isn't it you know we always have something beautiful to kind of uh, focus on and it really does help people yeah it lifts the tone i would always say that when you're planning your wedding budget do you know do leave a good proportion for flowers because they are just the scent the the the, the look of them and the lift that they give to your celebration i think is really really important um I'm, I'm a real advocate, but I'm not just saying that because I'm on a call with Sarah of Leafy Shop. <laughs> yeah. um, it's, it's true. And on, on if, my own wedding, I spent a lot of money on flowers. Yeah, I think if you see a room, if you like, we always say we should do like a before and after. Um, we're always like too busy running around. Um, but if a room before it's dressed and a room after it's dressed, it's such a difference. It's huge. Mm. And I have to say that when I get my real weddings through on the blog or for Unveiled, it's always where they've gone above and beyond with, you know, and a really amazing floral stylist, a lot of whom, I know personally and there's certain florists that when I hear that they've dressed a wedding I know that wedding will be incredible whether or not any of the other elements were there mm. you know it's, it's always a good starting point if I hear like you know you've done it or one of our other colleagues that are amazing I'll, I'll be like oh right this is gonna be a good wedding because they were working on it and yeah. I think that it won't not be it's not possible that these people haven't absolutely batted out the park so um <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's really nice and it's, it's noticeable when the kind of thought's been there on the flowers for sure. Um, so what part of your job do you enjoy most, Sarah? Is it the weddings or is it the flower school? Oh, both. Absolutely both. Like, I'd, yeah, I know. I can't decide between those two. I'm sorry. <laughs> and there's nothing, like, we still get a buzz, like, knocking on the door, holding the bridal bouquet on a morning to hand over that bouquet to the bride. And we're like, morning, happy wedding day. And uh, it literally like we, we still like goosebump up really like nervous before we do it um that's a massive buzz such a buzz like deliver you know it's a privilege to like go into that room on someone's wedding morning and hand those flowers over um and even after doing it for like 14 years or whatever it is um is it 40 yeah 40 years like i still have that nervous like that butterfly feeling so um when that stops that's when i'll stop i think doing do you know what i mean <laughs> yeah for sure but then the, the flower school um a lot of the florists that have come and studied with us now um and when i see them progress like there was a florist um she's not so far from us actually and she'd done um a course with us and she I taught her how to make floral columns and then she went and did one at a wedding and really beautiful i was like oh god i wish i'd made that <laughs> but, you know, like when you've skill and you've passed it on like that's great you know watching people um just even people who come for two hours making an arrangement and they're like oh god I made that I made that you know and that's like the nicest feeling so 
all of it really. I can't, I love my job. Luckily I love my job. So yeah, yeah. It's important, I think. Um, and, and what's your proudest career mo- like so Sarah's had loads of proud career moments like it's unreal um so what's your proudest career moment to date or should we break it down to 10 <laughs> I think there's quite a few I think um the fact ultimately that we're still going I think you know a lot of people it's really hard being a wedding florist it's really hard and we've done like two recessions and I've had two babies and I've got loads of staff do you know what I mean we've gone through loads of stuff I've brought my beautiful staff with me um and um we've done so many fabulous weddings so much feedback I think hi like um one a big highlight was I was on um tv with Mary Berry last Christmas oh yeah I wondered I wondered when we were going to hear that one that was a little <laughs> one <laughs> Surprise, it's taken so long from the girl. <laughs> um, that, that was a massive highlight. That was a big honour and, and she was awesome. So um, that was a highlight. Um, all of it really. Like we're, we're moving into doing some uh, merchandise as well. So I'm quite excited about that. That's a new development. Um, so yeah, all of it. I love doing weddings. Every time we get a booking, it's still a massive buzz, you know, to do it. And I just want to do more. Um, yeah. Imagine if it was Mary Berry's family wedding oh that it just yeah. goes through the roof doesn't it i mean it's she, loves level. she loves flowers so I, I, I gave her some flowers she took them home and had them on the table for a dinner party oh. i was so yeah well we um, love mary don't we we love mary yeah. but yeah so, i think yeah all of it so what's your earliest floral memory sarah God, I think it has to be, um, I was thinking about this earlier, um, I think it's my mum's garden, you know, because um, growing up, my mum's always had, um, she's always been like doing the garden and stuff. Um, and it's really weird with this lockdown, I can go around, she lives in the same town as I do, and I've been going around and sitting in her garden, like uh, social distancing, and um, just looking at the flowers that are growing there, and I was smelling them, and I, that's my first memory, it's like my mum's garden, like growing um wallflowers that are really beautiful that are out right now um and then also nasturtiums which are like a bright orange flower mm. um, and collecting the seeds from them that's i think that's my first memory yeah it's funny isn't it how those memories kind of stick with you i was thinking about this i've been doing a lot of walking during the lockdown yeah um in my hours exercise and it, it reminds me a lot of my childhood i must have done a lot of walking in childhood around where i lived in the countryside and um it's funny how these these memories come back. My earliest floral memory is um, snowdrops. Oh yeah, so, you know, picking snowdrops and and uh, so they're always quite special to me when we see them come out in in February around my birthday. I think, okay, yeah, it's my birthday. Snowdrops are out and it's nearly uh, it's a nearly good spring as well. Like spring's coming. Yeah, you've got through the winter. The snowdrops are coming. Yeah, yeah I think a- yeah, great. Spring, spring's on its way. Yeah. Um, and what about if you were getting married tomorrow? Uh, what flowers would you choose? Oh my gosh um ranunculus ranunculus one of my favorite flowers of all time um and um peonies are available at the moment so i'd have ranunculus in it peonies in it um some forget-me-nots because they're around at the moment everywhere and they're so beautiful and um well so to have roses beautiful roses scented gorgeous but yeah yeah so i change think that... blues oh but... yeah so yeah pinks blues peaches maybe a little pop of hot pink you see it's a funny it's a funny answer you've given then it shows your floral your florist thinking because you've answered that because of the season yes yeah 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 so if it were any season well i don't mean tomorrow tomorrow so any season (laughs) would you still pick the same probably (laughs) yeah i don't know i think i'd have like a different bouquet like uh, and sometimes i suppose that we've used that like on our social media like if i was getting married today this is what I'd, this is what mm. i'd have you know what i mean because um every time we get a delivery it's like christmas i mean it's, it's exhausting obviously because there's loads of work to be done but um it is like oh what's this and like you wait for like the first proper summery hydrangea to come in that's amazing and like when you get like the first tulips come in in like october november time um mm. and yeah, every time something new in season comes in, and that's why I'd, I always try and stick with seasonal because otherwise I'd be bored. Do you know what I mean? Doing the same thing over and over, using the same flowers. Yeah, I think I think that's it, it's been it's really obvious in your answer that is clearly your way of working. Yeah. <laughs> very interesting. Very interesting. She's not just making it up. <laughs> so I guess um, how can couples who are going to want to talk to you after seeing this video how can they find you at this at the moment or in general 
Um, so yeah, just uh, the website really. Um, just pop us an email on the website, and then um, we'll go from there. But yeah, I love, I do love Instagram as like a visual uh, diary as well. You know, I think it's quite good to have a look. You know, if you if you were a couple getting married, um, in fact, somebody asked me this yesterday. If you, she's like, I'm any winter wedding inspiration, and I said, well, scroll back to December, and then you'll see what what's mm. around. Then, you know, so yeah, I, I think your Instagram is a, it's really, it's it's a describing it as a floral diary is a great way to describe your your grid because it really is and it is it does give a real sense of what you're all about for sure your instagram yeah. um so yeah good starting point for either couples who want to um come and see you when we can or get in touch with you in the meantime because you're still chatting at the moment and um but also for florists or people who are interested in flowers who want to maybe check out your flower school as well. The Instagram's a good start point and then I'll link the um, website address and the flower school address here too. Thank you. We've also done some, I forgot to say, um, hem parties as well. That's quite good fun. Like floral hem parties we've done, you know, like flower crowns or um, like making bouquets, you know, that kind of thing. That's always a good, you know, like if you want like something for you, like your grandma and your mum to do as well that isn't going out and, you know, partying. Yes, that's a great idea. That's a really, really nice idea. Um, it's also quite nice for sort of just groups of friends to get together. Um, it doesn't have to be a special occasion, does it? I think yeah. I was just about to call you and book in an Easter wreath making class before all this. Um, but we'll do it for later on in the year, for sure. Yeah. Um, so thank you, Sarah, for being our floral guest on our YouTube channel. Woo-hoo. And uh, lots of flowery love back to you. Yay, thanks for having us, Jules. Mwah. No problem. Thank you.